What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. Are you happy? Are you trying to squeak out a little happiness in this dumpster fire of a year called 2020? It just keeps getting weirder every single week. I'm waiting for them to find out Bigfoot is actually Jimmy Hoffa, that he's been hiding out as Bigfoot all these years. At this point, that wouldn't even surprise me. Today, I thought we could maybe take our minds off all the garbage and take a look at some cities where you would have a better chance of being happy. Some people believe happiness is a personal thing. Only you can make yourself happy. To a degree, that's correct. But your surroundings and medication can help also. There's been many studies on which country, which state, which cities have the happiest population. There are a buttload of metrics you can use to figure this out. Some studies use weather, income, cost of living, depression, stats, poverty rates. Other studies include civic engagement, sleep statistics, divorce rate, and life expectancy. These studies have been done by organizations like National Geographic, websites like Wallet Hub, Forbes, Business Insider, and the US Census Bureau, to name a few. And I've read all of those studies and a bunch more. I also watched a documentary on Netflix about happiness called Happy. And it got me interested in the subject of happiness. I looked at all those studies and came up with a list of the places I think you have the best chance of being happy. Let's take a look. Number 10, Overland Park, Kansas. A lot of things can be said about Kansas and being a bad place to live isn't one of them. If you enjoy a more laid back and quiet lifestyle, this place is for you. Overland Park is a suburb of Kansas City, Kansas, and is often listed as one of the best places to raise a family in the country. There's a lot of reasons for this. For starters, the average household income in Overland Park is about $111,000 a year, and the poverty rate's barely 5%. The rent in recent years has been around $1,100 a month, and you can get a nice home for between two hundred fifty dollars and three hundred fifty dollars and $350,000. Anything under $200,000 is going to need some work. So let's see, you get paid well, and the cost of living is really low? No wonder they're happy. But the happiness keeps going. They have very little crime and good schools. It's not just for families either. The median age in Overland Park is 37.7 years. That's 35.8 years for males and 39.6 for females. For every 100 women living in Overland Park, there's 95.1 men. So you have a slightly better chance of being happy here if you're a man. The only real knock on this city is it might be considered boring to a lot of people. But other than that, this place is a killer place to live. It's almost like you have no choice of being happy. I was there one time and I sent my drone up in a park and a cop pulled up. I thought, great, he's going to give me a ticket, take my drone. All he said to me was, hey, there's some houses over there. Don't get too close. I don't want to get any calls. Problem solved. <sighs> Number nine, Scottsdale, Arizona. With a population of... 262,000 people. It is the fifth largest city in Arizona and the 83rd largest city in the United States. Things are good in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it shows people are moving here at a good clip. Scottsdale is currently growing at a rate of 1.4% annually, and its population has increased by 20% since the most recent census back in 2010. The average household income in Scottsdale is right around $130,000 a year. It is a little expensive to buy a home here, but condos are everywhere, and they can run anywhere from 200000 to 300000 Most of them have pools, which is great for making people happy. They have jobs, low crime, and relatively low number of people on antidepressants. That's always good news. Their divorce rate is really low, too. It may have a high cost of living, but it is about the only real knock on Scottsdale. Plenty of outdoor activities, just wear sunscreen, and be prepared to eat good tacos, which make people very happy also. Number eight, Bismarck, North Dakota. Bismarck, North Dakota has a population of 74,000 people, which makes it the second largest city in North Dakota after Fargo. So that tells you right there, this place doesn't have a lot of people. Living in Bismarck is a good thing. It is a small city that really has a small town vibe, and most of the residents own their own home. When more people own their own home, they tend to enjoy the place, they tend to take care of the place, because they have a vested interest in the city. They very much have that whole thing in Bismarck. Decent homes go for around 300000 and the cost of living is low. Combine that with good employment numbers makes people very happy to live here. Bismarck is also considered one of the more friendly cities in the country, which is a good sign. People are happy. People in New Jersey are not happy. They're rude. 
Anyway, there are a lot of coffee shops here and parks. Many families and young professionals call Bismarck home. Residents tend to stay here for a very long time. Not a lot of people move out of here, which is another good sign people are happy with the city. The public schools in Bismarck are well above average. The summers are amazing. You just have to deal with cold winters. If you're like me, that's a positive. They also got a really low divorce rate. Number seven, San Jose, California. San Jose is a city located in Santa Clara County, California, and is part of Silicon Valley. With a population of just over a million residents, it is the third largest city in California behind Los Angeles and San Diego, and the 10th largest city in the United States. I had no idea. Most people have no idea San Jose is actually that big. Most people not from the area think San Francisco is like twice as big as San Jose, even if they know about San Jose. But no, San Francisco is actually the fourth largest city in California with 800,000 residents. So why are San Jose residents so happy? For starters, they get about 300 days of sunshine. Yeah, that'll keep you happy. They have tons of outdoor activities, good public schools, considered a great place to raise a family, great place for singles, and some of the highest paying jobs in the country. Two downsides, it has a really high cost of living, and the traffic is really bad. I hit an old Netflix coworker up on Facebook and asked him why he thinks everyone in San Jose is so happy he lives there now. He said a lot of the residents are IT workers from India and Pakistan. I said, okay, why are they so happy? He said, if you saw where some of these people live before coming to America, you'd understand. So I think I understand. Number six, Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage has too many things going on for the people not to be happy. With five national parks nearby and plenty of daylight during the summer, there's a lot to love about this city. The thing that gets Anchorage on this list seems to be the health of the residents, the outdoor lifestyle, and the civic engagement. I told you that's a big one for a lot of those studies, civic engagement. There's plenty of civics to be engaged in here. Throughout the summer months, your calendar is filled with all kinds of festivals. Alaskans love their festivals, and there are more in Anchorage than you can attend in a single year including various brew fests, a couple film festival, and of course the can't miss Alaskan State Fair. Even the winter months are filled with festivals, including the granddaddy of them all, the I Did a Rod Race. That's the sled dog thing, you know, they take off across the frozen tundra racing their dogs. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Never been to it, but it looks really interesting. Looks like a lot of fun. Not the actual racing of the dogs, but just being there to watch it. Number five, Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota is a great place for people who don't like crowds, traffic, waiting for coffee, or off-the-chain nightclubs. The population is only 129,000 residents, and it is the largest city in North Dakota and the 217th largest city in the United States. Like I said, not many crowds. There are more things to do here than in Bismarck, but they're very similar. They have all the things you need in a big city in a small city format. This is a great city for families, a low cost of living, good schools, healthy lifestyle, and tons of outdoor activities. Like Bismarck, it can get cold, but the summers are great, so it almost makes up for it. This is a family type city. There's a lot of good people in Fargo, and it's easy to see why they're so happy. They, it's another one of these places that they never leave. They just live there forever. Not a lot of outward migration from the locals. You can get a nice livable home in Fargo for around 200,000, 220,000. Really, really nice homes are 350,000 up. Now here's a stat that really was good for them. Most cities have around 20% of their population being divorced at some point. Fargo's only 13%. Number four, Huntington Beach, California. Huntington Beach is a city located in Orange County, California with a population of just over 200,000 residents. And it's a great place to live and be happy. I was raised right up the coast in Redondo Beach and I spent a lot of time in Huntington over the years. And I can tell you, people here are always happy. They just always seem happy. And they always seem to be blonde too. I don't know what that's all about. Almost every girl I knew from down there was blonde and tan. Sort of like the whole city was typecast or it was a requirement before you moved there. The cost of living is high, but considering they have one of the best beaches in the state, it's not that expensive. The cool thing about this place is the community. The locals in most cases are really friendly and will have a drink with you at any number of the local bars that have been there forever. They got all these weird old bars that have been there for like 50 years. I heard they tore down a really popular one just recently. Anyway, they still have a bunch left. If you visit for a couple days, go put your feet in the Pacific Ocean. I promise you, you'll be happy. <sighs> Number five, 
Number three, Madison, Wisconsin. Madison is a city with a population of about 260,000, and it is the second largest city in Wisconsin after Milwaukee, which is about an hour east. And that's a good distance to keep Milwaukee at. People are starting to find out about Madison. Actually, they've been finding out about it for about 10 years now. It is currently growing at a rate of 1.4% annually, and its population increased by 13% since the last census in 2010. This is a naturally beautiful city with all the outdoor activities you'll need all year round. It gets cold and snowy, but there's still plenty of things to do. Madison State Street is a beautiful downtown center that has, you know, like nice shopping, food, great pubs. It is a college town too, so you know they have to have great pubs. Madison's downtown sits on a narrow strip of land between two lakes and has the Wisconsin State Capitol building right in the center, and it's a beautiful building. So why are the residents so happy here? A lot of it has to do with the city itself. This is one of the nicest and well-maintained cities I've ever visited. Wisconsin is considered the most family-orientated state in the Union, and Madison is its capital. The whole place is surrounded by water, which affects people's moods positively, and they have a bunch of golf courses that doesn't hurt either. The five lakes in the area offer more than enough mood-altering recreational opportunities, such as fishing, boating, and staring at a lake while you drink coffee with little Baileys in it. It gets cold in Madison. Sometimes you need a little Baileys, and they're not paying me to say that. I wish they were. They have 20 miles of hiking trails, and residents can drive a short distance to different ski resorts. Of course they're happy here. This is a beautiful city. You should visit it sometime. Number two, Austin, Texas. Here we have another state capital, Austin, Texas. Austin is in between San Antonio, about an hour or so to the south, and Dallas, about three hours to the north. Waco's in between Dallas and Austin. Don't stop there. The whole place is filled with a bunch of dillweeds that wear hats that say stuff like, it's beer 30 someplace. Austin is considered the live music capital of the world, and it has a growing arts community. For those of you who love all forms of art, you know how this makes you happy. I'm not a big, like, painting guy. I love music, comedy, photography, but, you know, paintings and sculptures, they, they don't do it for me. I don't know why, but hey, everyone's got different tastes. It is also home to the University of Texas campus, commonly referred to as UT Austin. Austin is a good-sized city with just under a million residents. They have a lot of people, but it sort of feels like a small town to me. I've been here more than a few times, and it just has a small town feel. Portland kind of has the same thing. Portland's actually smaller, but it doesn't have as much of that feel that Austin has. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way, and it's probably part of the reason they're so happy here. Great weather and amazing food scene also helps. This is a young people's city. It was ranked as the 13th best city for young adults in 2019. I'm sure the killer jobs, nightlife, and outdoor activities play into that also. Austin is a great city. It's one of those places you can just walk around and enjoy the city. I'm not shocked that this is one of the best cities for happiness. <sighs> And number one, Plano, Texas. Look at that, back-to-back -back Texas cities. Plano is a growing city just north of Dallas, Texas. Whoever's running this city knows what they're doing. They've made some great moves in the last decade or so, and it shows in growth and happiness. The website Niche.com has them as the fourth best city to buy a house in America and the fifth best city to live in in the U.S. It also has them as the eighth in both public schools and cities to raise a family. So think of, you know, 300 or so cities in the United States, and these people have 4th, 5th, and 8th twice. If you've watched my channel for a year or two, I've brought up Plano before. They started stealing companies from California a decade or so ago. One of the big ones was Toyota of America. They moved their headquarters from Torrance, California, which is just south of Los Angeles, to Plano, Texas, and took thousands of jobs with them. A bunch of my friends moved with Toyota and still live in Plano 10 years later. They've all bought homes, and they like it there. Only one hates it, but she sort of hates everything, so I really don't consider her opinion to be very valid. But Plano, Texas, it's definitely one of the happiest cities in the United States. There's a ton to do there. This is just a nice city. And the people are happy. All right, so that is today's list. I hope it made you happy. Anyway, don't forget all the links below. If this is your first time here and you like what we're doing, feel free to subscribe, give the video a big thumbs up, tell me what you thought about the video, tell me what cities you think are the happiest cities. I'd love to hear it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.